Okay, friends, here is my pattern. Leave that as it may. So I'm gonna tell you where I stand with this cat quilt. I need all my squares are gonna start off 12 inch squares, but when I cut them and square them up, they're gonna end up with being 11 inch squares. And that's all of the squares. So when I get finished with them, I gotta sew a quarter of an inch on this side of the square and a quarter of an inch on that side. So I'm gonna lose a half an inch this way and a half an inch that way. So when they're complete, even though I cut them that after I sew them, my completed squares will be 10 and a half inches. That's the completed one, all of them. So to start off, I do 12 just so that I can leave extra fabric. I cut them 11, but by the time I sew each side, I'm gonna end up with 10 and a half inch squares. So let's put it up here. I need 49 squares in all. All of the squares together, I need 49 squares, okay? And what I'm doing, I'm gonna have nine cat square and I'm gonna have 12 Dresden squares. This being the Dresden squares. This being the cat squares, all different shapes of these. And because the reason I'm having nine squares is that's how many were on the panel I bought. I'm gonna call these the line squares. Let me see if I can back out there. The, the, I'm gonna call these the line squares. I need 28 line squares. So that equals 49 squares. So here they are. In between each square, you can see these right here. I'm gonna go ahead this time and use jelly rolls. Not all of them are called jelly rolls. Some companies call them jelly rolls, but I'm gonna use the black ones out of out of these. And I bought these from So Yeah Quilting. I'm gonna use the black ones to go in between all the squares. So they're two and a half inches wide. So if I sew a quarter inch and a quarter inch, I lose a half an inch. So the way it ends up completely is two inches. I end up with two inches between all the squares, both directions. So I have a ten and a half, a two, ten and a half, a two, ten and a half, a two. So I end up with eighty-five and a half. I end up with eighty-five and a half inches down. And I actually I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I end up with 85 and a half inches down and 85 and a half inches across. Now a queen size quilt is 86 by 86 or 90 by 94. That's what it says online, 86 by 86. So I haven't put a, I need to put a, a binding on it when I'm done. So I would only need a half an inch to make that. So I'll probably use an inch or two, you know. So I'm gonna end up with a queen size quilt. Okay, and uh, out of all these, I, need, I needed, what did I need, 28? I needed 28. I have completed 20, so I need I need eight. On these Dresdens, I've really, oh, I haven't even completed any of them, so I still have uh, what I've done so far. Um, with the Dresdens, I have the top, I've glued this and glued this. I still have the bottom to put on in the uh, batting, and then I need to sew around each one of them. So really I have basically all 12 of those to finish. The cat squares, I have three completed. Let's say completed. I have three and I needed nine, so I have six left to do. So as you can see, I've, 
I've got uh, quite a bit to do on this. I have all these put together, but I don't have the centers. I do not have the centers put together, and I don't have these glued down on the tops. Because um, as you can see, you need you need uh, 49 pieces of batting, and you need 49 back pieces, 12 by 12. I showed you how to do these on part one, and actually, I showed you how to do the Dresdens on part one as well. So what I'm gonna show you today is how to put the Dresdens on the top and um, how to sew around and quilt these Dresdens. And I've got this to quilt first with the back and stuff and put these. I'm gonna do the, the um, video today and show you how to do this centerpiece and put this on here. And then we're gonna quilt this a little bit. But my question is, do you, would you like for me to go live um, and just be working on all these stuff that I have to work on and let, let you watch me do it and then ask questions? So let me know in the comments if, if you would like that. So, what we're going to do today is uh, I'm going to show you how I made this round piece for the center. I wasn't going to do that. I was going to do a hexagon or, oh, I was just going to do something different. But I decided to just go ahead and do the black round thing. Well, I bought a new sweater at Ross, <laughs> Dress for Less, and this was on the sweater. And it's really hard. So what I did is I brought it in here to my sewing room and I got one of these Dresdens out and I laid it out like this and I thought, will that cover? Well, yes, it will. So I thought, okay, I mean, I've got a lot of black fabric. I could use the solid blacks inside this. So I've it worked perfectly. So I'm gonna show you how I, how I did that. Okay, so we're gonna take this black fabric and I'm going to leave it it's doubled up and I'm just going to leave it doubled up it's fine and I'm going to put this on top of there I'm going to take this pin now you can take any pin you want the line won't show you can use chalk you can use colored uh, those Frixons, but I happen to have this Bohan pen from France. It comes with a white tip in it, and you can also get the darker tip as well, too. I'm going to push it back in so it's not out so far. So I'm going to take this, and uh, remember, I only need 12 of them because I'm only going to have 12 Dresdens in my quilt. So I'm going to make the circle out of this with this white. Oh, Broke the piece off. There we go. White fab or this white uh, pencil. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these scissors that are so amazing and they are so sharp and I cut myself with them yesterday. If you can believe that. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and leave. I don't know. At least a fourth of an inch, or maybe closer to a half an inch. It doesn't have to be perfectly square I mean perfectly round as you can see I'm not cutting this perfectly round at all here we go and then all right I'm gonna go around and I'm leaving this extra space because I'm going to all right, I've been watching Anne with an E while I'm making quilts when, when I'm not videotaping it. I'm going to actually put this circle back on there. And ooh, I'm gonna take the iron and I'm gonna push it up to where, you know, it's got that white line so that I know exactly where the light, white line is when we cut it. 
and it just takes a minute. Okay. Now, if you're using one of those Frixions, it'll disappear because heat makes those lines disappear. So you can use just, you know, whatever else. It'll show up on black chalk or whatever. Okay, so see, I have those little weird little lines. Now I'm gonna take my cutesy little scissors and uh, cut me some let's go a little longer i was really uh, when i was quilting the dresden i just loved every second of it i was watching a deal on you uh, youtube and i was just enjoying it so much and I mean, I you can find a movie that you like or a series that you're in. I've been watching Anne with an E, and <laughs> so fun. Okay, all right. Now that I've got this already heading that direction, let's do that and see what we think about it. All right. I'm so sorry I have the sniffles. Hubby and I both have had quite the cough and sniffles. Okay, here we go. Whoops. See how easy that is where I had already ironed it. It's pretty cool. My iron wouldn't hook back in. I don't know what was going on with that. Okay, here we go. There we go. Such a beautiful day today. It was certainly cold this morning, but man, is it pretty outside. Okay. Set my glue down. And it does, this glue doesn't affect your iron, and your needles, so it's okay. Yeah, see, this goes uh, a lot better when I had ironed it previously around that ring. See how nice that goes? Here we go. All right. Okay. Oops, I've got steam on, and this is actually not close to really. And see, it's not exactly round, round, but gosh, I'm I'm kind of okay with that. I did a zigzag all the way around. You can see it's not perfectly round either. But um, I first I did just the the kind of a, I don't know what they call that, but the little weird little zigzag. Then I did a big zigzag. All right. Now my fabric is pretty crumpled. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. So in other words, we're going to remember to, to see how we go to the middle of it. Let's fold it back this way. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do it like that. Okay. Still can't see the one going this way. That's crazy. Ooh, there we go. Okay, now we can see it. <laughs> okay, well, let's take this and we'll line that up 
line this up even this way. And then this should be between them. So that should be even. I don't even think I need to really go measuring it because look, boop, boop, that's the middle. Okay. Here's our piece that we just made. All right. We're going to take our Roxanne glue. And before we put this on, we're going to that down so that it holds. Okay. Just so that it doesn't move around. Okay. And I'm going to turn this, I think I did turn the seam off. Okay. And we're going to hold this on here and set it. Okay, and we're gonna take our little circle and we're gonna, we can actually do kind of the same thing, twist it and twist it and lay it right there where the corner, like that. And that's the center. Okay, I'm gonna hold it down and take our piece of backing black fabric, a little press, there we go, take our that yep pretty okay hangs over here a little bit okay then we're going to go okay we're gonna take our top place it on there pretty nice all the way around yep We won't have to worry so much about this holding. Now, what I did on the sewing machine to sew these stitches like that, I put my zipper foot on. Well, that goes off the back. I put my zipper foot on and I really like how it worked for, for this part of it, not this. We're going to do this part first so you can watch me do that, okay? Okay, hang on. Okay. I put this zipper foot on 
and uh, it has two sides and I put it on the right side. You can use any zipper foot or I mean any foot at all that can that you can follow a line and go right along the edge of everything. So that's why I chose this. And then I have my needle right exactly in the middle. So I noticed when I have when I have this right against the edge of what I want to do, it just the the needle itself let me zip zoom you in there. The needle itself just barely goes down. Let me oops, thread out of the way. The needle itself just barely goes down. And so that's, it's just barely along the edge. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. So here we go, I'm gonna put my needle down. I'm gonna put my foot down. I'm using black thread. I am using my, um, my foot pedal so that I have a little bit more control than just pushing the go button. And I'm gonna do this really close for just a little bit and show you. So I go right along the line. You can see I have my, my you know, my foot right along the line. Then I, um, then I lift, my camera's in the way here. I lift my foot and I just go, usually, I think it's just two, it's two stitches. Whoops, I went three, so I'm gonna go back one. And I turn it back around and see my needle foot right there is uh, going to go right along this and it'll do a seam just inside there. So watch this. You can use anything that will work like that for you. You don't have to use a uh, zipper foot. Uh, this just happened to work good for me. And see, I'm going to go along that edge till I think it's right in the exact pointy middle. And I'm going to turn it and go along that edge until I think it's about the same distance. I'm going to turn this and see it's going to go right along the edge again. Oopsie. Okay. Okay, then I turn it and I go two spots about one, two. Oops. And yeah, one too many. So I go back one, two is perfect, I think. All right, then see, it's gonna go right along there again. Okay, I'm gonna turn it this way. Go to the point, turn it this way. And this is not perfect by any means. Stop where I think it's about right. Yep, see, have right along there. Go to the circle, then I'm gonna turn it and go two spots. One, two, I'm gonna turn it this way. There we go. I think it's about right there. Turn it this way, run this along there to the point. Okay, turn it this way. To where I think it's about even there. Turn it, not bad, over just a smidgen. So I could go this way and go back one. Yeah, or I could have just kind of swooped it over. Mm -mm. Get back under there. Okay. Okay, I'm going to back out so you can see a little bit better. Okay. One, two. Turn it this way. Run it along here. You don't even have to go along this. You can do just the outer edge. Um, you can just do down the center if you even want to do that. You could do whatever works for you, whatever you like. See, I got that a little too far. I'm going to go back one. 
and side. Okay, and turn it and go to. Woo! I did three. Let's just go back one. This two seems to be perfect. See there? I really like this. I was watching some stuff on. YouTube, you know, watching the video or listening to it really, and I was just enjoying it so much, and I thought, oh, this is so fun. Accomplishing something. Okay, here we go. There you go. Now let's do. I have to take this stitch off, this foot off. This one is an O. I don't even know what this is for, but it's just a big open toe. I mean, I think I just opened it, be, bought it because it was big and open. I didn't use this last time, but I'm going to try to do it this time. I think so I can see what I'm doing, and I'm going to put it on. The blanket stitch that goes on the outside to the inside. Let me find it here and I will, let me see. What number was that on my machine? Now, you can do zigzag. If you have a zigzag, that's what I did before. And that actually looks quite good. Oh, okay. So right here, it, go, it goes on the outside and then does the blanket stitch on the inside. Okay. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, we're going to go slow. I'm just gently turning it. And it goes back over it each time. Okay. Let's a zigzag would work perfectly, especially a close together one. I just wanted to try something kind of different. But you see how I have it when it goes straight? I'm having it go right along the black line of my circle. I really only have 12 of these in this in this quilt. You could, and if you had more than 12, you could do anything you want. You, you don't even have to, um, you could do all of them different. So I'm going to do some stitches to make sure that it stays there and then I'm going to cut it. Okay. 
and there's the blanket stitch. Now, I mean, you can do this by hand. A lot of people do blanket stitches by hand. I didn't want to do anything by hand. I wanted to do the whole thing on the machine. Yeah. And then let's take a look at the back of the quilt. We have a few strings here. But we have the shape of the Dresden and the shape of the center. What I was going to do, and rather than having it be um, uh, circles, I was going to do uh, octagons. And I think that would have looked really cool. But I thought, well, well, let's just do the, at this point in the game, let's just do the, um, the circles. So there you have that part of it. Now, I will come back. I could even come back tomorrow and uh, do some more of, uh, actually maybe sewing some of them together with the, with the uh, sashing in between them. Uh, but let me know what your thoughts are about. I think it's kind of a good idea to, um, to maybe do some live where we're just sewing a bunch of these together and we're talking. And, um, and tell me if, if you're doing any of these designs or, or what you like about it or where it seemed hard or easy. And if you want me to do uh, a live so that we can um, ask questions and do it while I'm... Um, um, and while I'm sewing and also tell me a perfect well, we won't make perfect time for everybody but but go ahead and tell me what's the perfect time for you and we'll try to work it out so that it can be good times for for different folks okay all right well God bless you so much and I hope that you've had a wonderful day and I hope you understood this and I hope you liked it and I'm gonna get busy and so some more stuff until I hear from you and um, I'll see you tomorrow or the next day okay God bless you. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video and ring the little bell so that you know when we have another video. Okay, don't forget the comments too. Talk to you soon on the next video. Bye-bye.